Alright, on the ropes out here with Andrew Council, man. I gotta talk about the fights this past weekend. Your young bull, 17 years old, man, made his way to San Antonio. Uh, first pro fight debut, man. Got the, got the stoppage. 17 years old on the YouTube side. How did that all happen? Um, it was something we was planning on making happen for a while. Um, we was looking for the right opportunity, the right um, fight show to put him on, to showcase his skills and stuff like that. Team got together, um, decided it was the right time to pull the trigger as far as letting him have his pro debut, and that's how it came about. All right, we back. We we're talking about how it all came about. Um, we got together as a team and we decided to make sure it was the right platform he would be on. He was looking for a certain type of show to showcase his skills. And when the opportunity came up for the show that was going down in San Antonio, Texas, the team got together and decided that was the right time to pull the trigger. Now, uh, just going about the whole experience uh, for Dave, how, how was it for him, man? You know, just going through the whole process of being a professional now. You know, making weight, uh, going through the weigh-in process, uh, after fight, I mean, after weigh-in, meals, preparation for fight night. I, how was that all about for Dave, in your opinion? Uh, my opinion, everything was smooth. Um, I think because he kind of, like, talked to his teammates about it. He kind of knew what to expect. Um, he went through it with a breeze, like he'd been here before. So he took it, took it in stride, and um, he just went forward with it. How would you rate his performance on the night? I actually think it was an excellent performance because of the um, his opponent, the way he came out. I knew he was going to do good just by the warm-up in the locker room. He was well composed. Um, he didn't seem nervous. He was just happy to be here. Before the fight, he walked out in the arena, walked to the ring, looked in the ring, shook his head, and I knew he was ready to go. Now, I, I want to go back to what I said uh, earlier, man. 17 years old, how was he able... He, it's almost unheard of, man, to have him, you know, on his pro debut be showcased on the YouTube side of, of, of the Showtime boxing, man. Uh, I'm sorry, not Showtime. Uh, was it Showtime? It was Showtime YouTube time. Yeah. yeah. I think it was, it, it was a team effort. So, like I said, we got together as a team, and we figured out that this is the right time, the right show to put him on. He agreed with it. His family agreed with it. And he took it in stride. Uh, what have the uh, people been saying about uh, day performance as far as uh, with the Showtime? Oh, they said they the execs. Him. They said they love him. They said they expecting big things from him, and the sky's the limit for him. You know, uh, prior to seeing him in his first pro debut, what were his, what were the expectations of him? The reason I ask that because they they put him, like I said, put him on the YouTube side. So yeah. it's, there's some type of expectations that they had for him, man. And it seemed like he passed everything with flying colors from what they saw. Yeah, they they have been they've been checking it out. Like they've been checking them out. And like I said, it, it's mainly was a team effort. The team got together. And like I said, we knew it was a great opportunity for him. We knew that he was going to capitalize from that. And we knew that preparing for this fight, the people he's been working out with, as you notice, he he shout out to all the people who's giving him great spawn. I knew that he was ready, and the team knew that he was ready. It was the right time to pull the trigger. Now I gotta ask you, uh, Andrew, man. I was just looking at. Uh how Dave uh, looked that night, man. It almost looked very similar to, to the style with Trey, man. Do all the fighters have that certain style? You have that certain way of training that your fighters have a, a, a certain way, to, the way they execute what you want to do? No, all of them pretty much have their own style, but I think they piggyback off their teammates. They, they talk to each other a lot. They get encouragement from their teammates. They you know Trey Ron was there to give Dave encouragement. That means a lot to him. To know that his teammates been through it before, so they had their own style, but they pick it back off each other. I, I gotta ask you, how special was this for you, man? Because we always talked about this. You've had him since uh, since he was young. It's your baby, man. Yeah, so, yeah. so to see that, man, how, how proud of you are you of him? I'm very proud of him. Um, like you said, this one was a little bit different. This was a guy I had from day one. Every fight he had, I had got for him. So it was a little different emotional roller coaster for me too. Having a young guy, that's my first guy at that age turning pro like that. Now, what's up next for Dave, man? How active do you want to keep him in the year? Um, I want to keep Dave very active. I think he's going to come right back in April. We're going to move him at a fast pace, far as numbers, but it's a slow pace, far as the growth process. Uh, with that said, uh, coming back in April, will it be a part of uh, Showtime or will it be something locally? How was that? We have, we have two. Stay tuned, huh? Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Say, stay tuned. Uh. Yeah, stay tuned. So now you got options. Yeah.
man. That's that's a great thing to see for Dave, man. And then uh, you had uh, Wayne. Uh, um, was he on that card? Uh, no, not not that card. Uh, uh, the local no, card. Well, no, he didn't get the opportunity to fight on the Rose card. card. So actually, um, Wayne is going to fight um, March the 25th in DC, a local show. Okay, okay, March 25th DC. Will that be at that that new uh, Mystic Zone? The sports complex, on, yeah, that's a yes. that's a nice spot for fights, man. I like it. Yeah, definitely, uh, I like that spot out there, man. So as far as uh, what we see here, man, we got Trey here. When uh, Trey next upcoming fight? That should be coming up soon, right? Uh, Trey is fighting on um, March the fourth in Ma LA. March fourth, LA. Okay, uh, do you know his opponent yet for that um, one? I think it's Justin Delos. Now we've always talked about uh, with him, uh, definitely. Uh, each fight has been a step-up fight uh, for those who accept the contract because <laughs> that's been a uh, hard road also as well, right? It's a very hard road, but this is this is a this is a big fight for Trayvon, um, a veteran guy. This is a live body guy, um, a guy that's been in it with the best, so this is definitely a step-up. This is an A-class step-up opponent for Trey. Speak, uh, can you speak on uh, the meaning of that, what you uh, meant by that? Because, you know, you see this in boxing, you know, you hear the term step-up a lot. But he really is looking for those top 20, top 30 type caliber uh, fighters, man, to keep moving up in the rankings. Yeah, this guy, just like I said, this is a live guy. This is not no, you can go check this guy out. This guy been in there with the best. I mean, for Trayvon has seven fights, and he fights somebody, if I'm not mistaken, the mighty the guy might got 25 fights, and he's a veteran. Like I said, a live veteran. There ain't no, no walk in the park, so Trayvon have to be on his A game. And these are the type of fights that's going to elevate him to the next level. Um, where does this put you, your fighters or any young fighters um, at the 147 or what you see right now? Because pretty soon you're going to see the the Terrence Crawfords, the Earl Spencers uh, of the world move on to, to 54. And then you have that next wave of young talent, man, that's that's looking to be the head of that division with the Bootses, the Virgil Ortiz. And then right after that, you got the next wave of the youngster youngsters coming up uh, with the Trayvon, Jaleels, and things of that nature. This, this, like I said, this fight is a step-up fight, I think, after this fight right here. You get through this right here. He's already, already on rank. I think 43 or something like that. I think probably be in the top 30, 32 or something like that. So it's a big, this is a big opportunity for him to showcase his skill and to go against a guy like Bill Oates. Yeah, man, Andrew, I truly, truly appreciate your time, man. I know you was very excited uh, about the pro debut uh, for day with my, and more to come for Triple uh, Threat Dim, man. Appreciate you. All right, man, there you have it. On the ropes, Andrew Council, Triple Threat Jim. We out.
truth. That's the truth. Look at how many fights you had this year. Look through the gloves. Wipe out the gloves and look. See what happens. Nobody had a better game. How you feel about Keith's progress so far? Um, Keith been doing good. Um, I think he should have, uh, this is my own opinion. I think he, um, as far as in the DMV, I don't think nobody had a better year than him. He had over, uh, I think, 28 or 29 fights. He lost four of them. Um, he entered in the gloves. I think once he win his gloves, yeah, he turned the corner and fast pace. I think he's doing great. You know, uh, going back, Probably like uh, sometime like a year ago or so. Remember uh, one of the big things, the issue of always touching the head gear? Yeah. Yeah. How did he get over that that whole thing of uh, touching the head gear? Um, he still do it every now and then, but he's much better than not touching the head gear. I just, him constantly be reminding him you don't know, have to touch the head gear, which is a, we have, we have a little insight. So I've asked him, man, why are you touching the head gear? You trying to make sure your head's still on your shoulders or something? <laughs> man, he been looking good over this past year, though, man. He came a long way, man, for the whole team. Actually, proud of him. They just always remind him, like, man, you came a long way in a short period of time. So he's gonna keep doing great. He'll be next up. Oh, definitely. Okay. That's what weight? What weight? Uh, he, he fight on 160. 160? 160. He probably, he probably didn't get to 54. So I've been fighting him between 160, 165. Mm -hmm. and anything in there from 60 to 70, I've been taking fights. Oh, okay. I know he's gonna. I know he's gonna win a glove. He's like his weight class, his age. He already beat. He's already beating. Already beat. When, when is uh, the glove? He actually fights the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Okay. All right. Yeah. Bet. I'm gonna try to make that joint. That's at the Rose Carl. Rose Carl. Yep. Yep. He don't have. No, he, don't have he don't have no chance to grow. Look. Look. Look at these guys. Monzo. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you ain't got no choice but to get better. You gotta get better. How things going with Jared? Jared, Jared is looking great. Uh, I'm looking for a great performance. Uh, Marshall Wolf and Jared. And after that, probably be a big announcement coming after that. Now, now for Jared on that fight in March, uh, what weight will he be uh, fighting at? He'll be fighting at 165. 165? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, 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 you still, um, what about the amateur program uh, with uh, Triple Threat Gym? The amateur program is still moving strong. Um, like I said, Keith, he's fighting um, the 25th. Eric Spencer is fighting the 25th. Uh, what about uh, Day Day? Day Day, Day Day won't be fighting until the... Uh, that's the Junior Olympics. What they have coming up in June? Okay, uh, so he'll be a part of that down Lovington, Lovington Texas, yeah, or wherever they're they gonna do it. Yeah, they still active. Um, Shane still fighting. Johnny's fighting in the Golden Glove too. So my amateur program is still moving along. So. Yeah, I seen I seen one of your little ones last night. Was he new? That was that came in. He had the chairs around the heavy oh, bag. Oh, that's a little kid. Oh, that's a little kid. I've been saying for like maybe um maybe four months or something like that. Yeah. I, still, I still got my little ones, right? I actually have um, twins. I was gonna ask you, you still got the twins? I got yeah. the twins. One of them fights with the Stump Yard Show, which is April 30th. That would be his first fight. Like, oh, program. so he gonna be on, the, on that uh, Stump, Stump Yard? Oh yeah, I, I, I got it. Yeah, I got, got him make on that there, too. and I got um, Eric Spencer on there. Them oh, he on that card too? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So I got him. Um, I got I got him spaced out. And I got um Keith on the uh the uh the knowledge the knowledge gym show coming up. I got so many dates in my head. Man, they have a show coming up who too. helps got, you with all this? <laughs> I'm just trying to keep up with all this. Um, I actually. I actually been doing it by myself. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just used to doing it. So I kind of get everything written out when they gonna fight. I space it out so I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? But little Wayne's father is starting to help me um, on the days that I can't make it to the amateur show. That you know, he helped me. All oh, my pros helped me out. So we have, we have a family thing going on right now. Trey, come out. You ain't lying because Trey and them went down uh, to see Dave fight. So Dave worked the corner for me a couple of fights. 
Oh, dang. They were the corner. They helped. They helped each other. So they, they, we got, we got it going on. We so got it. It's a, it's a true family here. Yeah, it's a true family. Yeah. yeah. And then, oh, you remember you had your big heavyweight in here uh, yesterday, man. How things going with him? Things going good with him. He had two, uh, two amateur fights. They wanted him on the Thump Yard show, but he's been, uh, he just opened up his own gym. So he hasn't been in here, so he just really kicked back. So they actually wanted him on the Thump Yard show. But I told him, they gave me two kids. I said, if you can put them on there, you give me three now, that's on y'all. <laughs> Dang. So he's doing good. That's good, man. That's good. What's your thoughts on uh, what's going on uh, right now with boxing, man? I think I think boxing is doing great to me. I see a lot of fights being made. Of course, the fights that haven't been made, but they still have a lot of good fights being made on the PBC side. And I actually see Top Rank have a lot of good shows coming up too. So I think boxing is in a great space right now. No, I, I would say the same, man. I, I, I like what I'm saying. You know, of course, you're not going to get every fight that everybody want to see at this particular time. I think I saw somewhere too, man, that uh, I don't know how true it is that Spence reached out to uh, the girl for the gear. Yeah, I seen that this morning. I yeah. woke up this morning. I clicked on YouTube. I see, I see that. that too. Yeah. So I was like, oh, wow. Spence, Spence, Spence really want that fight. I think that fight need to be made because it is, it is set a good standard for the young fighters know this. When you get to the point, man, it's about the best fight and the best. You know what I'm saying? If you want to make it to the Hall of Fame, you want to be recognized as the best, it should be the best fight. The you best. know, speaking on that, man, what's your thoughts on the female side of that? Because it seems like they really, they really about that action, man, trying to get the undisputed matches. And mm -hmm. I think the female... They've been fighting the best for a while. The best been fighting the best for a while. And I love to see the females get the same opportunity as the guys because they grow and it helps the younger females to come and see that we can make it because it's, it's, setting, it's setting a trend to let the, like I said, the up-and-coming females see this, this is the end result. They, they doing a lot. And I think top rank, if I'm not mistaken, I think top rank did all girl cards not too long ago. Did great numbers and stuff like that. So was that him? Was that them or, or was that Eddie with that all girl card up in Madison was he, Square card? But that was Eddie. Oh, I, I think that, I think it could have been Eddie though, because you know he no, big with them girl cards, one of them with the women cards. Girl card, and I looked at that and I was like, that that was that was big. But it could have been Eddie. I thought it was top line, but it could have been Eddie. But I seen the all girl fight and I sat there watching. I was like, that's a great card. Yeah, that is that is a uh, uh, great to see because uh, that, I think uh, Alicia Bumgard had did a recent interview yes. where she was like was talking about her frustrations with boxing and wrote a letter to Eddie was like, I don't know. And he was like, man, just stick in there. I'm going to get something worked out. And that's when it worked out with the undisputed situation uh, for a, a lot look. of women. That was a good look for the women, for the women part of the sport. Um, they needed to throw more cards like that, give them the same platform as the men, equal opportunity. Um, but I think it's going to happen. Definitely see that happen. Yeah, I think it's going to happen. Man, I appreciate the time as always, Andy. You're welcome. Now, 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 today, what, I see you just uh, basically working on drills today. Yeah, um, well, because all of them have, all of them have fights coming up. Uh-huh. That part was fighting April the 29th, so he just staying, he just basically just staying through, doing like 12 rounds, 6 rounds straight with the jab. Um, pretty much everybody in here has some coming up with the first priority, meaning like the ones that had the fight. The closest, like with the Trayvon, once he finishes the number, I'm gonna get him with the Mets. So I have a system going on where they all have to, they all can train together, but when it's a person have a fight, I have to pay attention to that person at their time. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I've been doing it for a while. That's, That's why I asked the question, man. You doing this by yourself, yeah. man? But when it's time, when it's time for the spa, I separate the time. Mm -hmm. Like Trey coming in at nine, Dirk coming in at two, Keith might come in at eleven. So I have the two hour window. But when I know they not spawn, I would tell them all to come in. You see what I'm saying? I would have them all come in and work out. So they do their drills and stuff. Um, I do a lot of um, three by three drills with them, so they partner up and stuff like that. So they used to it. They used to it. And let me ask you, man. I know you, you probably get a lot of people reaching out, man, for you to train them, man. How, do you still have time for any more, man? Nah, I really, I really don't have time. But I do have. Um, a lot of people reaching out to me. I'm actually about to um, put a camp together for a young man. It's like a 122. It's like 9 and 1. They reached out to me, so I'm about to put a camp for him together. Because I, I have Wayne here, and I'm going to let Wayne be in camp. I'm going to work for Wayne, too. So 
I have a lot of people reaching out right now. I don't have the time, but I just keep. They keep reaching out. <laughs> <laughs> man, it's, it's, it's crazy right now. It's crazy. And they see what you're doing, man, yeah. and how you're moving your fighters and how they are actually being seen, man. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah, I go back to Dave, man. 17 years old, and he on the YouTube side off the bat, man. That's the, that's how you know, man. You on the, you in good hands. Yeah, it, it, it was a, it was a good look for Dave, but it also was a good look for the whole team. You know what I'm saying? So everything we do, we do it as a team. So when we make them decisions on certain fights, yeah, it's for that fighter, but it's also for the team to open the door for the rest of the team to see that this is next up. So when you see Trey fight, when you see the platform he's fighting on, that also helps Dave. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Dave fighting that platform to also help out the next person that's coming up because they know we have a pipeline of fighters coming. You know what I'm saying? The sea has, the sea has been planted already, so they already know. Look out for the next person. So he's trying to do an interview or a trade fight. You're going to always see one of the guys, guys acknowledge their teammate. They're going to, don't get any interview trade. He's going to say, I, I lost my teammate working like when Dave did his. He, he put a shout out to everybody that helped him spawn. Even the people that wasn't part of the team. He announced Makai. He, he, had, he had mentioned different guys because. I let them know you always have to show love to the person that helps you get ready for that fight. Now, 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 coach, is it easy to get the next fighter in that position when they see how good the fighters that you currently have are doing when you put them in that position? Yeah, Whereas the PBC is probably very happy of what they're seeing out of Trayvon and what they saw out of Dave. Like, we are very impressed because it's, 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 it's not only important to. to you want to be impressive as a boxer, man. You know, put on performance, and that's what they're doing out there. Being impressive, not just, okay, yeah, I got the win. No, we, they want to see something in impressive fashion and bring you back. Say, I want to bring him back on that YouTube side. Or, the, or you know, right before main events and things of that nature, just to see what you're doing out there. It's, it's, it's very important when you have the time to shine. You have to take... Um, the most opportunity and turn it into a bigger opportunity. So when they, like when that when they fought, it opened the door for the next fighter coming up. So they, I mean, that 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 just was a great look. That actually opened the door because I got an interview at 12 today with PBC. Oh wow! To talk about the fighters I have, what's, how, how I'm doing, what I'm doing. Seems like they, they reached out. Said, seems like so they're very interested to put them in the rotation on different cards. Put them in the rotation on different cards, and want to know who I got next coming up. Who's next? Oh wow! Yeah, so okay. They, they out. Oh, that's what's up, man. I'm glad to meet me on the inside with that. <laughs> yeah, to get that early, man. But uh, yeah, like I said, truly appreciate the time as always, Andrew. You doing big things in this area, man, for real. And everybody taking notice on that. <laughs> we out. <laughs> Right about here with my dog Trayvon, you know, he fueling up with the good crave cage of water right there. Yeah. <laughs> Water's life, water's life. <laughs> man, I, I like what I see out of Triple Threat, man. Andrew got a system going, man. I like it, man. He's 100% dedicated, man. One of the most dedicated dudes I know in the street. And I predict, man, within the next next five to ten years, you're going to hear his name, just like how you hear the Derrick James of the world down there in Texas, man. Yeah, yeah. Especially with everything y'all doing right now, man. Yeah, little Dave uh, just made his debut. It's so only up from here, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you keep doing your thing, big dog. Yes, sir.
me get this going. I'm playing out, bro. I think you're doing something real quick. Let me get this going. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah
Well, that's what's up, man. Keep working here. Keep doing what you're doing, sure. big dog. Sure. All right. <laughs> it ain't moving. You should know where you at. That's part of awareness. You gotta always know where you at. At all the time. I tell them, you shouldn't trip on nothing like that. There's always three people in the ring at all the time. You, your opponent, and the ref. ref. So when you're for peripheral business, you gotta see that. You can't be, oh, damn, look at that. I just gotta keep an eye on your man, but I still gotta see Mons over here. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I gotta see my man Jason over here. I still looking at you, but I see that. That's the peripheral business. We say that ring presence, oh, yeah. knowing where you are at all times. They gotta be hard in that. When you trust your man, when you come up, yeah, you got nothing. There you go. You gotta turn the right way. saying you're going in there reckless, but don't let them hang around like that because you can find out and then mess around and be a real fight when you had the opportunity to end it. You got to always remember, a wounded man is a very dangerous man. You understand that? So you don't go in there reckless, but when you see him injured, you got to go get him. You don't get paid for overtime. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're going to throw a bonus at the end. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? I have seen that. I have seen y'all that, but I have seen that done. What? So a bonus at the end? Yeah. Me and Mike, I have seen like. You have to make make go more rounds. Yeah. Sure. No, no. What I mean by that, I, I have seen fights at the end of the fight. <laughs> the motor promoter said, "Look, this is a great fight. We wasn't expecting this. We're gonna cut your extra ten boom, whatever mm. the number." Is. I have oh, seen oh, that. wow! Yeah. For for the performance. For the performance. Yeah. That was good. I didn't do that. No, that's I have seen it a couple times. Man, that's, that's not, that's yeah. a Damn, Ma, you got to get you some better bet bonus money. <laughs> a lot of times, a lot of times, the bonus is you might fight on somebody's card, and you, your, your manager just hook you up on that card, but really don't have no connection with them. The bonus might be like, look, we're gonna bring you back on this card again because you put on a great performance. That's the bonus too. <laughs> Like that. Those knowledge. Good, good, good. Good. Now they looking at that. Now change it up. Now, now change it up. Now change it up. Then Jay. Yeah. Yeah. So they looking at that straight move.
right, Andrew, you, you, you talk about the importance of the jab. Who would you say right now in boxing got the best jab in the game? In the game? I mean, a lot of people that Best jab. That's, that's, that's kind of a hard. All right, give me, give me five. Give me five. People, you, people have different type of jabs. So you got, you, got, you got a jab. You got a person like Earl Spence that uses his jab not the way everybody else uses his jab. To set the, he's setting up for the jab, but he has a punishing jab. His jab is, his jab is going to damage you know what I'm saying? His jab is not to be setting up the left hand. His jab is to break you down. As you see, a lot of them fight. They, you look at the guys that fight him, uh -huh. that whole, that whole left hand side of their face is all messed up. That comes from the jab. It's like a power jab, a shotgun jab. It's not a pity kind of jab. So he uses his jab in a different type of form. Um, that's kind of hard for me to answer that because a lot of people got great jab, and I can't. So okay, for a prime example, uh, uh, one of the people they talk about who, who uh, their jab game is uh, Devin Haney. What's your thoughts on on how he does with his jabs? Devin Haney uses his jab to, to, uh, to set up a lot of a lot of combinations. He uses his jab to keep a person off of him. See, Earl Spence uses his jab to do damage to make to, to inflict punishment. To inflict punishment, so this type of jab. But I do think I managed to say that Devin Haney has a great jab. I, I think a lot of them, a lot of people might look in a little different case. They say he don't have a chance, but I think he's a massive boxer. They definitely use his jab very well, very well. Somebody like Tank that doesn't jab a whole lot, he has a very quick jab. It's a, it's, it's a jab to make you back up off of him to say, oh, watch out, the left hand might come. So everybody use their jab in a different type of way. Mm -hmm. Terrence Crawford has a good jab too. You know what I'm saying? It's a snappy type of Tommy Hearns type of jab. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it's, it's to do a lot of damage too, but it's more of a range of final type of jab. So everybody uses their jab differently. Different. They use their jab differently. Is that the same for like your fighters in here also as well? Yeah, I make, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I I'm make my guys sometimes come in here, they might do 12 rounds straight jab. Oh wow. Yeah, it's like. Like Stefan said, he did six rounds. You see Monza with one, with one hand on straight jab because once you once you use the jab, it sets up everything. It, it helps to keep the person off you. A shotgun jab, a range of range finder, um, scoring points. So that's something if you look at all my fighters, you're gonna see that you can trade with a good jab. You can see Jay with a good jab. You're gonna see Keith with a good jab. You can see Jay Day with a beautiful Illusional type of jab where you don't see it come with all them jabs, constantly jabs. 12 rounds, probably like two or three times out of the week. All you see, you're going to always see my fighters do that, set everything on the floor. I don't really have nobody, to be honest, with you. I have a good jab. That's, that's, that's our secret. That's why our trademark is always jab, all day long. They'll take action in, they'll take, man, we might do 12 rounds, never jab. No right hand gloves on the day. Yeah, that's why I came to ask you and talk to you about that because, like I said, I see you with repetition yeah. on drills more than what you see with everybody else with the flashy mitt work and everything else. You you really try to make sure that their skills are honed in and they have the fundamentals and the skills for when they get to them 10 to 12 rounders, you got to that's, pull, that's, pull that's, the tools out. Yeah, you're going to see, um, I, put, I put a lot of stuff out there, but I don't put everything. I put certain things out there on my chain, but all my fighters going to do a lot of jabbing. Um, they're going to do a lot of drills on the bag, a lot of footwork drills, a lot of um, range, binding, and distance type of drills that you might see, but not might not understand it because it's not explained to you, it's not going to really understand it. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that, just knowing how to use the jab and... Just use a jab different type of ways. Shotgun jab, a flicking jab, a faint jab, just different jabs. Mm -hmm. But a lot of rounds. Go ask any of them. I've been talking to Monzo in there. Yeah, ask him about that. that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's what made, to be honest, I think that's what made Keith climb the ladder fast this year. Using his height and using his jab to keep people off knowing that he's a taller person, that he have to have a jab. A tall man without a jab is a recipe for danger, disaster. You gotta have a jab. Got to to keep him back. You yeah, gotta keep him back. Yeah. Man. They working though.
Go high. Go high, Keith. Keith, go high. Jab, go high. There you go. Always do the high, they can't come over the top like that. Do the low. Go higher than that. There you go.